Thank you, Jefferson, uh, for these kind words. I, at the outset, I welcome PSG to Calcutta. We had a whole session today. And I think at the conception of PSG, I'm not even a featured session here, the whole idea, the concept uh, is brilliant. And uh, we can take it to the, I would say, the minds uh. when we interact both the capital of this endo as well as the option mining at this not to learn. And we have President FC. Obviously, uh, why I'm telling his name? Because uh, the last two years or so, I mean, you can hear trigger talks. So trigger talk itself probably gave us lots and lots of insight into the various aspects which we have covered today. And I think the people should make a point that a few hours, which is only one and a half hours, uh, to at least uh, keep also free for these talks. These are maybe hours, and they actually give us lots and lots of information. Today, my talk was given a sports partner by Dr. Lessina, by Dr. Bhutul, thank you, Dr. Bhutul, and Dr. 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 and Dr. Amit for considering me, but I tried to make it a little bit different than most taken care of mothers with diabetes. And why so? The reason is that I was going through an article in RSLJ textbook of diabetes with women. And this was the name of the chapter. And I was actually taking most of the stuff from that chapter because it was written by none other than Dr. Usa Sri Ram who will probably be looking when we talk about pregnancy in diabetes. And I think this could be a some value, but, uh, most of the stuff are there from the chapters, that yes, it will give some kind of light into this particular aspect. Diabetes is a chronic serious disease affecting everyone in the family. One of the ten, ten, causes, uh, ten causes of death is in adults. Maternal diabetes is a serious detrimental effect on the mother as well as the feet. A newborn and prompt and effective management of GDM, old behavior, understood it, is extremely essential to prevent complications. So, there are maternal effects of diabetes, the effect on fetus, very well uh, spoken by the previous speaker and uh, most of the speakers as well. What did the HACO study say? Guys? It's a positive correlation between impaired glucose tolerance and the risk of preeclampsia. A study observed that 5.9% prevalence of gestational hypertension and 4.8% prevalence of preeclampsia in women with GDM. Extremely, extremely difficult to observe any person if you have such a problem in our patient. The hypostate also showed an increased frequency of cesarean section. One of our previous speaker had very well said about it. Another study from Birmingham showed 25 fold greater risk of perinatal mortality and 11-fold greater risk of congenital malformation. And always the very years uh, time has already been spoken about when they are expected, where there is a chance of increased congenital malformation. Hello, ball. Women with prior GDM has 70% greater risk of CGD than women having a normal glycemic pregnancy. So this is a the concept of not only the really the of and these are all the not very different from any other but definitely increasing the 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 by the Mm -hmm. so, you have the Adequate but not excessive weight gain, learning appropriate food and exercise behavior. Just about Dr. Bhaktarani was speaking of that. And you can well imagine, it looks very simple, very difficult to manage. 
very difficult to eradicate, very difficult to function. A patient whose goal for MNT would be these four. I mean, yes, we do speak, we do give a good prescription for diet and exercise, and then explain that why it's so important. And if you can really achieve that, probably half the job done. All women with diabetes should not be referred to a dietitian before or early in pregnancy to generate a nutrition plan. At the cost of tea gestation weight and targets at least 5 to 10 percent weight loss before conception. Our chairperson was asked about this. How many actually had they take a preconception? Uh, okay. That is a problem. We have a huge population to get them. But definitely at any opportune time, we need to counsel the patient as well as family members for these kinds of future insights so that they really undertake this preconception care as and when they are suitable for that. And obviously, carbohydrates with low index, diet is preferred, and the diet plan recommends substitution of saturated fats and trans fats. I'm not going too much into that. Diabetic management during delivery postpartum lactation. Intrapartum with uh, nursing management medium is the whole idea to maintain the maternal euglycemia to prevent neonatal hypoglycemia. I think uh, one instance was sent when the cord is cut, the patient is ended with hypoglycemia, it is not very well controlled. And that is the whole idea that we need to maintain the euglycemia in the bottom state. Close monitoring of women with GDM during labor and delivery to be done at least once an hour or organized every 30 minutes, which probably in the last scenario may be difficult, but at least every hour to two hours, it should be done so that we can give optimum glycemic control. Maternal blood glucose level must be maintained between 4 to 7 millimole, or you can uh, uh, recommend that if the capillary blood glucose are above 7, intravenous dextrose and insulin infusion must be given during labor and delivery. The endocrine society advises monitoring glucose level for 72 hours after birth to rule out hyperglycemia. So the first thing is the first 72 hours, you can make out whether this patient has having hyperglycemia otherwise. If the patient doesn't have qualifies to be a diabetic, a 2 hour 75 gram OGPT is recommended 6 to 12 weeks after delivery to test for glucose intolerance or diabetes. Postpartum glycemic management. Emphasis on assessment of the future risk of diabetes and mitigating that risk is extremely important. Breastfeeding, already talked about, recommended for women with GDM as associated with reduced obesity risk in the offspring. Needing, need for family planning should be highlighted. This is the opportune moment when you can address these issues when the patient is under your care, as additional pregnancies can further increase the risk of diabetes mellitus. Effective diabetes mellitus prevention strategies include antipartum, postpartum, delayed postpartum, long term preventive counseling care, and preconception counseling. So, all these preventive strategies need to be undertaken in order to have a positive outcome. Just look at this particular graph of what, uh, uh, what it suggests that suppose you are doing an assessment at the postpartum level and we have three categories type 2 diabetes diagnosed, impaired glycemia, normal glycemia, you can adopt accordingly. If type 2 diabetes behave, the management profile is similar to what we do for any type 2 diabetes patient, that is intensive lifestyle medication. If it happens to be impaired glycemia, you go for intensive lifestyle modification, do a follow up 3 to 6 months and then accordingly decide. And if it is normal glycemia, standard lifestyle modification definitely, but then annual reassessment is essential. And then whatever may be the assessment status, you have to plan accordingly. So this is what you do those patients who had a prior GDM and at a postpartum level. If it is early post of 1 to 3 days, in the the importance of balanced diet, physical activity, weight reduction, suitable contraception use, harmful effects of smoking. Breastfeeding should be done for at least three months. And education on topics of diabetes, CVD, metabolic syndrome, family planning, preconception, counseling, uh, this is the time they are most receptive to. So this is the time when we should do the maximum education counseling so that the patient can undertake in the lifestyle. And screening the finger stick glucose test, postprandial fasting can be done in the first three days. 
This post quantum that is fixed will be fixed in addition to the previous point what I have discussed. Uh, importance of one to three year follow up is essential in infant care and preventive of childhood obesity. So childhood obesity, the whole concept should be taken care right in the six to twelve weeks. Educate the patient, mother, that this is so very important because what has already been uh, explained a little uh, a while ago. Uh, these are the patients which are prone for developing early metabolic syndrome or hypertension. So importance of monitoring of blood pressure, BMI and performing 75 gram, 2 hour OGTT, lipoprotein and cholesterol level is as well advised. So what are the mechanisms of metabolic I think this was talked about but still are going into it. Obviously the short term effect of like lactation is decreased plasma glucose, decreased plasma insulin, increased glucose utilization, decreased lipotoxicity. And the direct effect happens to the pancreatic beta cells mass increase and proliferation increase, thereby increasing the insulin secretion. So a reduced beta cell load and a preserved beta cell function ultimately reduce to lower risk of type 2 diabetes. So encourage to breastfeed the newborns immediately after delivery to prevent hypoglycemia in the newborn. Continuous breastfeeding would lead to reduction in to obesity, glucose intolerance, and diabetes later in the life. Researchers have indicated that breastfeeding reduces the risk of overweight in children, adolescents by 20 to 50 percent. And depending on the duration of breastfeeding, I think we have supplementation. So these are the medication benefits which a woman can, uh, which a child can have basically if the, if the patient, uh, if the child is on medication, uh, breastfeeding. And nursing becomes so very important. There are a whole lot of studies which are pointers toward them that breastfeeding do reduce the glucose and insulin level. And likewise, it can have an impact on the obesity as well as future diabetes. So, management of newborns of mothers with untreated GDF. Insufficient glycemic management means more of fewer fetal neonatal complications. Poor glycemic control during pregnancy means. Spontaneous abortion, low delays, significant chemical moment. And these have been already spoken about and what are the various malformations <laughs> can occur. And these are the various metabolic disorders which can occur as hypoglycemia is one of them. So if the baby is unable to feel a steady intravenous glucose infusion should be given to avoid rebound hypoglycemia. So this is again a very important feature. Respiratory distress we see quite often in these group of patients and they need to be adequately addressed. So may require at times administer suspected and asymmetrical sexual hydrotherapy may require a of the system. So to conclude, postpartum hyperglycemia care could be improved by educating providers on the current postpartum standard of care and to have appropriate glucose training and behavior management is extremely important in the postpartum history and subsequent family planning is advised. Healthcare providers of given diagnosis ensure continuity of care and referring to the right healthcare providers for intensive behavior change. Thank you.